In this video, we are going to create our models for our project and set up entity framework and create our database. So let's get started. Models are just basically some normal classes that we define some properties inside of them. And the models are going to represent the tables inside our database. They are also going to contain some data for us, which we are going to use. So let's create our first model. Let's create a class. And because our project is not that big, we only have three to four models here. And the main model that we are going to focus on, and it's going to be the core of our project, which is a resume project, is the works that we do have. So let's start with the work model. Here you can see we do have a simple class. The first thing that I want is a public int of ID because any work that we are going to have should have an, a specifier, something unique about them, because we want to get the work, we want to edit the work. So we should have something unique that we can operate on. And because of that, we are going to create an ID. After that, each of our work is going to have a title of type string. Then we are going to have a public string description. We also have a string for our short description. And after that, we are going to have another string for our thumbnail, another one for the GitHub link, or instead of GitHub link, we can call it source link, because maybe we are not going to use GitHub. Okay, so uh, another thing that I want to add is a public Boolean of is active. And uh, this Boolean is going to determine that whether this work is active or not. So we can in our index page only show the works that are active. We are also going to have a public list of strings. And I want this for our images. Now in this series, we are going to use entity framework for our ORM. An ORM is basically a middleman between us and our database provider. So it can be SQL Server, it can be MySQL, and it will provide us with some commands that we do not need to write SQL or we do not need to access the database directly. It will configure the database and create our tables for us. Not all the ORMs do that, but Entity Framework will do that for us. So here, we do not need to go inside database and create the database ourselves. Here we define a model and the Entity Framework will convert the data that we have inside this model and turn it into a table. And we are going to see how it is done after we are done creating all the models. So let's save the file and create our next model. The next model that I'm going to create is our setting model. And our setting model is, as the name suggests, it, it can be configuration or setting or anything that you like. And it is going to provide us with some data that is for the configuration of our website, as the name suggests. So here, I also want a public int ID. Then we have some basic configuration that we're going to put. For example, the public a string logo that we have. So we can define the logo of, of our website. We are going to have an, a string of name. Then we are going to have a phone number, which is going to be shown inside our header and footer. Uh, we also have an email. And I think that's enough for our settings. We do have some other parameters if I run the project that we have to take a look at our website. Here you can see we have some other things. For example, inside our footer, we do have a code, we have uh, a copyright claim and uh, made with uh, love by anyone that designed it. And I don't think that's necessary for us to change because this is a tutorial. But if you want to change it, you can do it. So I think that's enough for the setting model. And I want to create another model for our index page. Uh, we can put the data that for our index page inside our setting as well. But I decided to separate them for simplicity. And uh, let's create our index model. 
And inside our index model, we are going to have uh, also an ID, which is our primary key for our database. Then we are going to set public string a title. We do have a description. Then we have an, a string of second title because inside our index page, we have a title and description at the top and we have a second title and a second description at the bottom. So here I'm just going to create a second description and inside our index page, we also have a list of badges. So if I run the project again, here you can see at the bottom, we have a list of badges. This can be a list. So any amount of badge that you have, it will be added dynamically and uh, it can be a static as well. So we're going to say we always going to have uh, only three badge. But to learn the relationship between the badges and uh, our index model, I've decided to separate them and create a relationship between these models. So you can see how it works. So we are not going to create the badges right now. We're going to first create a model for our badges. Let's just create a model called badge model. And our badge is going to have an ID, it's going to have a name, and it's going to have an icon. Now we are going to create a relationship between these two models, because each index page can have multiple badges, and each badge is going to be inside one index page. So inside our index model, because we are going to have multiple badges inside our index model, we're going to create an I collection of type badge model and I'm going to call this badges. The I collection that we have put in here is an interface that is in the same family as list, dictionary, but it is on a higher level. So list does give us more functionality, but for the purpose of creating relationships between our models, we're going to use an I collection. And I've said that any model that we are going to create here is going to be a table inside our database. So basically, we are going to say that our index model is going to have a collection of our badge models. And to complete this relationship, we also inside our badge model should create a public index model, which is index. And what it is going to do is going to say index model going to have a list of badges and each badge can only connect to one index. And it's good if you go see how the relationships in a database, for example, SQL Server works. But because Entity Framework will handle all the relationships for us, just knowing that is enough for you to create your project. So now that we have it here, it is not going to create anything inside our database for this index model. It is a virtual model that Entity Framework can handle the relationship inside our code. So it can know what do we mean by the code that we wrote. When we say go get the index of the badge that we have, it knows that which index it is connected to. But we need something to put into our database as a foreign key. As of two database that we have, let me put this here so we can see both of them as at the same time. As two tables that we have inside our database, one of them is the index table, another one is the batch table. And as I said, the collection that we have here and the index model that we have here are not going to create any columns inside our database. So how do we connect these two? What we can do is to put an ID of our index model inside our badge because for each index that we have, and in this scenario, we only have one index, but just get the meaning of what I'm trying to say. Let's say that we have five index models and each index model is going to have a list of badges, but we only going to assign each badge to one index model. We do not want one badge to be assigned to multiple index models. That's the one too many relationship that we have. So now that we know we have some virtual things that the entity firmware will take care of for us, we don't need to create a foreign key for our badge that is going to be created inside the database. And it will be known to our 
entity framework and to our database that this badge belongs to which index. And for doing that, I'm going to create a public int index ID. And the index ID is going to be the ID of our index model that we are assigning this badge to this index, for example. And this index ID is going to determine which index this badge belongs to. So now that we got this out of the way, let's close it. And if you didn't understand what I mean, it's completely okay. I know it's a complicated matter and uh, it will get simpler when we move on and you see it in code and you see it how it works. And inside the code, we will debug the code and we will see how it is getting the data, how it is manipulating the data and you will understand it much better. So now that we have our models, it's time to create a DB context and install some NuGet packages for our entity framework. So entity framework is not installed by default on your project. You need to install some additional packages because there are multiple ORMs and uh, the Microsoft does not force you to use entity framework. Here, I'm just gonna search for entity framework and we are going to install three packages. One of them is Entity Framework Core, another one is Entity Framework SQL Server, and Entity Framework Tools. So here, let's select the project and install Entity Framework Tools, and here click Apply and Accept. And if I go into the installed packages that we have, here you can see Entity Framework Tools has been installed. All right, I will install the other two as well, the SQL server and the core. Hit apply, accept, and now the three packages that we wanted are installed, as you can see here. The entity framework core that we installed contain a class called dbContext. It is the class that gets between us and the database and let us handle the database. Now, we want to tell that dbContext to add our models and create tables from them. So what we're gonna do, first I want to create a new folder and I wanna call it data. Under the data folder, I wanna create a new class. Let's call it application DB context. And this application DB context is going to inherit from the DB context that the entity variable core will provide for us. So now our application DB context has all of the things that the DB context class contains, and we're gonna add our own stuff into it. Now, the way that we can add our models inside our DB context and say, this is our models and I wanna create a table for each of these models. We're gonna do that by creating a variable called DB set. And DB set inside our DB context will be recognized as a new table. Now, I want to give it the index model. Let's reference it and uh, okay. And the name that we are going to give it here will be the name of our table. I want to give it the index. All right. Now, I want to create another DB set for our setting. Let's call it setting, create one for our works. Let's call it work. And we have another one for our badges. All right, and I wanna call it badge. Okay, now we have defined our DB sets and each of these will be a table inside our database. But we need to configure our database to, so it knows which database it's going to connect and uh, which connection string it is going to use. And there is another class provided by the Antifirmo core called DB context options. And we're gonna set that options inside our constructor. So if I press control dot, here I can create a constructor and uh, I do not want my properties to be inside my constructor. Okay, now inside our constructor, we are going to get a DB context options. And we need to set the type of our DB context option to the same class that we are going to have. And we will call it options. Now, if you didn't understand what happened here, uh, the DB context option is a generic class and it expects us to pass a DB context class. We can here pass 
the DB context, but the things that we have added to our own DB context will not be affected by the DB context options. And uh, here we do have everything that the DB context has and added our own things. So inside the DB context option, we should pass our own DB context. So the options will be specified for this DB context. And one last thing is that we are going to say base options. And what does this base options means that our DB context that we have inherited from has a DB context option itself. And we want to say anything that we add to this DB context options, pass it to the base class, which is the or original DB context. And we are not going to set any values inside our constructor. We can add values inside our constructor and pass it to the base class, but we are going to use it using dependency injection. And anything that we pass to our options inside our application DB context constructor will be passed to our DB context original that the entity framework provide for us. Now that's for our DB context. Let's go into program CS to configure our DB context. Let me remove the comments here. And, uh, and here before we build our builder, we want to say builder dot services dot add db context and our add db context needs us to pass a db context to it and the db context that we are going to give it is the application db context that we created okay and because our application db context has a db context options inside its constructor we're going to open up parentheses and here we're going to say options are going to be configured in here now, what do we want to do with our options? First, I want to say options dot use SQL server. That's the first thing that we're going to do. And the use SQL server is going to be added to us with the entity framework core SQL server package that we installed. Now in here, I need to pass a connection string. If we see for the values that the use SQL server gets, you can see here, it's getting a connection string. Now I can set my connection string directly here, or I can set my connection string inside our app setting JSON. As we talked about in the previous videos, the app setting JSON is a JSON file that we are going to put our configuration and the static data that we are going to get and use. So here I'm gonna say connection string and inside connection string, I'm gonna put a main connection and this is going to be our connection string. So I've just copied it from the internet. This is a connection string for our database. What we are going to connect is our local database, which is specified by dot. And our database name is going to be a resume project. And I think that's good. Now let's go inside our program.cs. Here we want to set the connection string that we have and read it from the app setting JSON. The way that we can read from app setting JSON is by saying builder.configuration.getConnectionString. And this is provided for us because the connection strings is a set key that the .NET Core recognize. So here I'm going to give it the name of our connection string, which is main connection. And over here, we can have multiple connection strings inside the connection string keyboard. And if you go look for the main connection that we have. Now that's it for our options. We can have more options here, but uh, for now, only use SQL server is enough. Now let's go create our database. So when you change your models, for example, you wanna add something to the model. Or for example, right now that we have created our DB context and added our DB context here. We have some commands that we can update our database or change our database. And to do that, the entity framework core provided us with something called migrations. Migrations will create an SQL query from our models and execute those SQL queries into our database. So anytime that we have a change, we're going to add a migration. 
it will compare it to previous migrations and only change the things that we have changed. And the migrations that we have is provided for us by the package that we installed, which is Entity Framework Tools. So to use them, we are going to go into Tools and we are going to open up Package Manager Console. And over here, what I want to do is to say Add Migration. After that, I'm going to press a space and set the name of the migration, which is init. And uh, because it's the creation of our database, we're going to initialize our database. Uh, the name doesn't matter. If I press enter, it will build our application DB context and create a SQL query out of it. All right, this is the migration that it has created for us. So so this migration is still a bunch of code that lets us read it and make sure that everything is okay. And after that, to put this migration inside our SQL server, I'm going to say update database and it will start building and putting it inside our database. All right. So here we have a problem, which is because of our connection string. If we go into our app setting JSON inside our connection string, I'm going to add something called trusted server certificate. And uh, this is going to fix our problem. All right, let's update it again. It is done. And now if I open up SSMS, for, which is an application for managing the SQL server, now we're going to connect to our database. Here we have trust server certificate and the server name is dot, which is the local host that we have. I will connect inside our databases. Here you can see it's resume project. And if we open up resume project inside our tables, all right, here we have the batch table, index table, setting and work table. All right, now let's go see the relationships that we created for our badge and our index. Inside our database diagram, if I click a new database diagram. Here I can add the tables that I have. I will select the tables and add them. Okay, let's close it. And here you can see the tables that we have are over here. And between our index table and our batch table, you can see it is a relationship. And if I hover my mouse over the connection that they have, I don't know if you can read it or not. It says that there is a relationship between index and badge through the index ID that is inside the badge model. Now that's it for this video. I hope you learned something and I tried to explain as simple as I can. So if you haven't understand what we've done in this video, I highly suggest watching the video one more time because some stuff that you learned throughout the video and you didn't understand after you watch it again, because we have watched the database diagram, we have we seen the commands and you have seen the full picture. If you watch it again, it will be like a puzzle that is coming together and you will understand it bit by bit. So. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Bye bye.